What's up, guys? Uh, today we're going to go on a ride with my buddy Trevor and Rob Lee, some of the other folks from the Central Florida EUC community. I wanted to get the patent on the trail as well, but we got rained out, so it wasn't all that. Oh, so we got. Many Let's get into it. Got so many wheels. Got so many wheels. What's up, Papa? What's the key to pendulums? Um, keeping yourself over the center of the wheel and not thinking in terms of being just straight forward and backwards. Give yourself a little bit of like wiggle. And it's like, that's it. Just try to make sure that you keep your, like, you're over the center of the wheel the whole time and just try to wiggle. Don't try to keep yourself in a straight line. Oh. And then, and then you can do the impossible, like landing the baby. <sighs> Down we go. So many S22s. Got a sexy master. How you doing? My name's Johnny. Hey, man. Eric. Nice Eric. to meet you, Johnny. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, yeah. brother. What you riding today? S22. S22. Oh man, are those yeah. the E-Ride pedals? Yeah. Nice. Can I pull? Can I pull them down? I see. Yeah, take them out. Oh wow. I love that feel. Wow, that's nice. That's cool. You got some kind of thing that like makes them press back up into it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. Down. Those are sexy. Sexy pads. Sexy masks. Though. Beautiful things. Man, you don't need them. You need this. Got Mike Buell in the house. This at all times. What's up, Mike? How are we doing? What's up? How's it going? Fantabulous, bro. Fantabulous. Great. You guys out here on the best S22s in the world that look like. Oh, yeah. Run it up. Hey. Run it up. Gang, gang. Hey. Gang, gang. What's up, Jake? Gang gang. Oh, gang gang. Guys. Like that girl? She's like, gang gang. Boop. Gang gang. Dude, I love Rob. You ever see an idiot leave a V14 Boop. in the middle of the road? Swag. Boop. I did. Gang gang. <laughs> um, a truck would later try to hit it and I would be made to feel like a complete idiot because I was. Y'all see this? Yeah, like, I, I know I get a lot of feedback, and I have heard a lot of feedback about the suspension, but in this video, you're going to see the suspension just get beat to hell. You're going to see a lot of usage. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun. I don't really get to participate in these group rides as much as I would like to, just because of my proximity to the other riders. I mean, I, I live in Gainesville. So whenever I do get a chance to, I really try to embrace it and hang out and talk to as many people as I can and just meet as many people as I can. I was truly overwhelmed by how many S22s were in the house. It's a sweat. Sex 22 orgy up here. Sex 22s. I'm just going to film you all past. So many sex 22s. The rise of the sex 22. So I really, really like to blast trails. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can do that uh, in terms of just going really, really fast inside of a group situation. You can either A, get to the front of the pack and then wait for people at the next logical turns, or you can B, sit at the back of the pack and then play catch up. And it's a whole lot of fun to do. And this way you're not really pushing on other riders and you're not getting other riders to do anything super duper dangerous. So if I have it to say, I'd rather be at the back of the pack and then just play that catch up game so I don't have anybody else doing anything super risky. The guys from the St. Pete crew, uh, they've, in like Tampa, they, they have a really good understanding of group dynamics. When picking your wheel, there should not just be the consideration of like you. And I know that sounds silly because this is like your wheel, right? But if this is a social thing that you ever plan on trying to do with people, then consider not only your budget but consider the budget of your friends that are planning on going riding because if you buy this over the top nuclear powered like stupid fast wheel um, and your friends can't afford that or your friends can't ride that your friends can't keep up with that at that time you know and those things the skills they will improve right but try to figure out what the mean like the, the average riding scenario that your city has to offer at like it's peak enjoyment whether that's trails or whether you have a lot of open roads because there's not a whole lot of traffic those are things that i would consider when trying to decide whether i want my clique my crew my friends whether we should be a street riding group 
or we should be a trail riding group. If there's a thick amount of trails, then I would consider more of the trail stuff. If you live in a rural area that has lots of open roads and very little opportunity for you to be able to um, encounter uh, incidental traffic and things that may uh, cause problems for you, um, then I would uh, I would consider doing the street riding. You know, always with local laws and traffic considerations in mind. I mean, ultimately, you've got to try to be respectful and understand that we are the most recent thing on the road, on the trails, on the sidewalk, in the bicycle lane. So, you know, this weird um, ent- entitled mentality that I hear a lot of EUCs, uh, le- a lot of EUC enthusiasts have, um, a lot of some enthusiasts have, a lot of bike enthusiasts, it's very, very ill-placed yeah, and it's kind, of, um, it's kind of narcissistic. The, the, the that forward just a bit there, yeah. And then I'd bring that bottom back thing up underneath it a little bit more. And then you'd be straight. Roll call. Too much booty in the pants. Dance. Too much booty in the pants. It's a beautiful night. Alright. Corky. Corky. It's the native EUCs. And they're all adjusting their Velcro. Be quiet. If you listen closely, you'll be able to hear the hook. The hook and loop separating each time. With precision, they adjust for balance and poise. <laughs> You're going to go all Steve Irwin and stick your thumb up their bums next? Probably. <laughs> Only if they're okay with that. That's cool. Yeah. You should do a video where it's like that. You're you looking for the elusive. Yeah, we just kind of up Yeah. No, no, no. Because I mean, like, I'm weird. I grew up during Ren and Stimpy days, so like, I'd have like the EUC, like, like drinking breast milk. Like, I'd have like a Leaper Kim drinking breast milk from a from a S22 or something. Got a lot. During this group ride, there were so many awesome, awesome people. Um, Mike Buell. Uh, and Rob, they are such huge anchors. Rob Lee, Bobby Wasabi, huge anchors to that Central Florida community that we have here. They are constantly organizing things. Um, like Rob, he constantly organizes these trail work days. So that way, you know, it makes it a little bit easier for us to be welcome out there. Um, speaking of which, tailing this mofo is a lot of work, especially on his home trails. He is a fast man. He did really, really great um, when he went out to Ant. Uh, as well against some of the best in the world and he's such a humble 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 guy and it's super super duper 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 sweet um there is talks right now regarding the adventure suspension um i personally think that the suspension works really great and you can see it during the trail video here over and over again you'll see the rebound working and you'll see me sending launching and uh you know riding eating up everything but I guess um, that's not good enough for in motion, and I'm not sure exactly what we are getting upgraded or what's inbound, but there are suspension upgrades inbound already for the V14, which to me is a stupendous off-road uh, machine as it stands. So uh, stay tuned. i excited to hear what's going on with that. Um, and next, you know, I, I've heard a few different people at this point in time uh, comparing the V14 and the Lynx. I know that people who have been on my channel and watching my videos, we already have the understanding, we already know. We don't compare a 16-inch wheel. Uh, and I'm going to use the nomenclature that I came into. I give a damn what that measuring tape says, wheel to wheel. 16, 20, and 22 is how I will always define it. Look at all those S22s. S22s in the wild. But yeah, that's how I will always, always define it. Um, so you can't compare a 16 and a 20 inch wheel. It's just don't do that. Um, one of them is going to be better at handling. Can you guess the more small Let's go. Diane? Uh, don't compare a 20 inch and a 22 inch wheel. You want to guess which one is going to be more stable at speed? The 22 inch wheel. So. It, 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 when you consider the ride quality of a 16 inch wheel versus a 20 inch wheel or a 22 inch wheel, you're gonna notice a lot smoother ride inside of the 20 inch wheel 
and inside of the 22 inch wheel. You're just going to notice that empirically. So comparing them is not an apples to apples comparison. You know, I tell people if you have only one EUC in your arsenal, I really think that the EUC should be something like a 20 inch right there in the middle. So you can explore, you can explore trails, you can explore streets, you can explore a little bit of both, right? And decide where you want to spend your time because the 20 inch platform is the jack of all trades platform. But if you're looking for a trail demon, if you're looking for a trail beastie beastie, then I wouldn't really be looking, depending on your trails, mind you, if there's a lot of turns and it's real tight stuff, like what I experienced, I would not be looking at a big, big wheel. I would be looking at something a little bit smaller that has a smaller footprint that's easier to rip around these turns so I don't tear up my shoulders getting hit by trees as I'm coming through. Comparing a wheel that has got like 160, or no, sorry, like 150 volts-ish uh, to a wheel that's got 134 volts-ish and one is like massive and one is not, it's just, it's just silly. It's just so, um, so that's, you know, that's, that's how I feel about that. And I mean, I'm not going to change my perspective about that. And the companies that are comparing them and dropping these subliminal weird hints side by side with the V14 in the shot or saying, Oh, the cameraman was riding a V14. He had a bad suspension time. Well, that's not where the suspension was meant to be. You know, I don't appreciate this up down uh disparity that we are seeing people use to uh build up the quality of another wheel i mean that's not it's like politics it's like u.s politics like dude like your campaign should not be based on trying to diminish the quality of the other person in the campaign just show us what you have you know show us the changes that you're bringing you know show us everything you've got and tell us your plan of action and tell us which way you're going to go and let us make our decision based upon that. Like this whole talking trash, talking down um, about other people's wheels and subliminally like slanting other people's wheels. Dude, but Goad makes a good wheel. Like they do. Uh, King Song makes a good wheel. Yeah, they do. Uh, Leaper Kim oh, makes yeah. a good wheel. They do. Like In Motion makes a good wheel. All of these companies make good wheels. Can you break any of them? Yes. Have all of them been broken underneath different circumstances with various writers? A hundred percent. Are any of them immune to being broken? Are any of them immune to flaws in their manufacturing? Absolutely not. So, with nobody having an entirely clean place to stand or talk from, we should not be building the platform of a lynx based upon diminishing a wheel that is not even in its category. Same thing with the V14. We should not be diminishing the quality of the lynx or the experience that somebody can have with a patent based upon the positives of the V14. As a human being, as anything, as art, as anything that you can experience, you should be able to stand on your own merits. Okay? Should not have to talk down or trash other people in order to be successful. If you do, you're baiting and playing into the lowest vibration, the lowest chakra that a human being has available, the lowest energy fruit that a human being has available. You're appealing to negativity, appealing to conflict, appealing to chaos and dissonance. One cannot at all discuss the woes of this world in any regard if choosing to address a leisure toy in chaos and dissonance is the method of your uh, expression. Like, that's, that's crazy to me, right? So anybody out here that's like poo-pooing like this wheel or this wheel or talking trash about this wheel in comparison to this wheel, like none of y'all, none of them, none of these people have the right to say nothing about any ills or woes in politics or in 
the world or about a damn thing going on with people because the lens is toxic. And if your lens is toxic about wheels and putting down things in order to feel better, nope, that don't work. That don't work. Anyway, this was a good ride. This was a really great ride. Uh, This portion of the ride, we were heading over to Vortex. Uh, Vortex is the jumping portion of Santos over there in Ocala, uh, the mountain bike park by Omba, the Ocala Mountain Bike Association. Uh, It was wet, so we were cautious and we tried to um, ask, well, we didn't try to, we asked the uh, the people who were doing trail maintenance, um, Mike, he helps to build the jumps down at Vortex. We, we asked him if it was okay if we addressed some of the jumps um, during this period, and he was actually really cool about us being able to do that. Um, the lips, though, on the jumps, it seemed like they had been refinished, so I had a little bit of a hard time with trying to get my groove on, so to speak. I wanted to talk a little bit about the, I guess, the philosophy of the way that the Patton uh, is built versus the way that the uh, V14 is built. So the idea with the Patton is that it's completely indestructible. So it's like this very, 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 very rigid, expensive sort of thing that has the, you know, you have the bumpers on the front. And then if it gets through to the bumpers, then you have this expensive uh the, the cases on it, the sides of it are very, very, very expensive. They're, it's a very well-built machine. It's meant to never be destructed. It's meant to take every single impact and then get up and go away. Should you damage the side though, should you damage one of the case parts, replacing that is very, very, very expensive. Replacing one of the panels is incredibly expensive. The way that it was done with the V14, however, <clears throat> it's treated like a motocross bike okay so the plastics and the fairings are treated in that way they're meant to be broken they're meant to be disposable they're meant to not transfer the vibration of the impact into the inside of the components which that's the way that armor is done so your helmet is designed to crunch a little bit when you hit something and that little bit of give is designed so that way you don't take that shock and impact into your internal components. That's the way most pads are designed. They're not designed to be like steel plate, right? That like is on top of you. It's meant to diminish the vibration. So the V14 was built with that in mind. It was built with the notion that you would be laying impact into this thing over and over again. So with that in mind, it's much, much easier to replace these plastics that are set onto the v14 uh dare i say you could even customize these plastics and i'm gonna see people do that i know you can just pull these plastics off and you can spray paint them you can do whatever you want to to them personally i'm gonna order a couple of more just so i never have to worry about not having brand new plastics because i will break it i'm I'm going to break it it. all i have the v14 with great doing the intense things in mind oh god yeah Probably gonna keep it this way. I moved the pads back on my V14 nice, bro. for the jumping, and it made a, a whole lot of difference for me. So I will be experimenting with keeping the pads back just a little bit further than what I had them initially. When it comes to picking safety wise, road or trail, initially, I was 100% trail. I was like, there's the trails are way safer. The trails are way safer. (laughs) And it's because of the traffic thing, right? Like the obvious notion is that there's this traffic consideration because cars will pop out and they can hit you. And if you're going through the streets, then, you know, that's very likely to be a possibility. It's, It's a reality that you can experience that does not happen in the woods. But I will say this. I have gone on a number of street rides and i have also gone on not quite so many trail rides at this point in time. <laughs> guys poor mike 
you know, put them in your prayers. Mike, he jumped down the, the vortex drop in and it was super one, duper bro. slick and wet and poor baby. He, you know, he's not a baby. He's really a good. Man, but, really you know, good. He yeah, hit his head like, and he got a little, he got a little concussed. And then, you, need it the right you know, the way, other bro. homie, I forget his name. He was on a Sherman S and the trails were super duper it? slick and wet. And he ended up having to bow out early because he cracked his ribs. You're right. You're right. Man, let me tell you, it's just been. It was, it was a whole lot of oops, ows, and dangs. People got messed up on the trail. So, in theory, in theory, the street is a whole lot more dangerous. <laughs> but in practice, pardon me. Uh, but in practice, um, I have ruined myself on a trail a few times. And um, this trip... You know, we started out with at? like eight to ten EUCs, oh, and we ended up I they did just uh, we ended up with two of those guys down. Um, this is Indigo Flow, uh, going back through the backside of Vortex. They had been working on these trails, these jumps, Damn, and when I first wrote this, I was able to send pretty much all of these jumps. It seems like the lips have been refinished with a whole lot more pop in mind. And the way that the pop is implemented makes it a little bit harder for me to have the clearance that I want to get um, with regard to landing the jumps appropriately. So it was a little bit oh, eh, this time. I'm yeah, eager to go back and see, you know, what can happen. Uh, maybe if I can get a little bit better angle of attack if it's dry I or. I don't know. Hang it's on, just, something down. I've been here before on my V12, and check, it was quick. absolutely butter, butter, butter. The lips down, didn't seem so down, poppy. And well, this the, time I came through, and all of the lips had been refinished freshly, and oh my goodness, it was it was just absolutely intense. I'm uh, going to try to change some of the settings. I don't know if you guys know this, but in motion wheels have this really cool thing where you can adjust the amount of braking by percentage, you can adjust the amount of uh, acceleration by a percentage, and then you can adjust your pedal hardness by a percentage. Um, this is a feature that uh, Leaperkim actually just picked up into their veteran links, or into, into the Leaperkim links. The yeah. So that's pretty cool. Everybody out there getting a links will be able to have the, uh, yeah, so the pedal now. hardness as a, uh, as a percentage and not just uh, as a... Um, uh, in the wood, uh, and not just as like a, a soft, medium, one. hard. No, no, so, no. Oh, this one here. guys, yeah. I yeah, no, can't I thank you one. enough okay. yeah. for cool, stopping yeah. in. Uh -huh. oh. I am deeply yeah. grateful for at? every I single from down there person, time, for every right? single comment, for every single bit of feedback. Of I tried to take the oh, feedback the from the last little question that I asked yeah, and apply it in the best way that I know. And, you know, I hope that it came out okay. The... The editing portion, the technical portion of this. All right, sometimes Shit, it's a little this bit fucking difficult. thing is so cold you know, right now. I'm learning, and I'm not perfect, but I'm gonna well, keep on learning, and I'm gonna keep on doing my best. What's up? And uh, yeah, I just I can't thank you enough. <laughs> there we go. Trevor on the phone, Rob at the camera, and big big shout out to my sponsor, Lazy Rolling. Thank you for my new black performance hoodie. Let's jump into some fun, guys. So this is actually from my Instagram. I recently did these jumps. I uh, I couldn't do any of the jumps at Vortex, but my local park had dried up, so <laughs> I got lucky. I hope you enjoyed the content, and thanks so much for everything else. Please do uh, like, share, comment. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. It makes me feel wonderful. And uh, yeah, we'll see you later.